And welcome back in another edition, Stripe Show Podcast. It's a Monday, and uh, well, we're kicking off short game week this week. I felt appropriate as the U.S. Open is near. You're going to need a short game for that. And of course, the audience out there, you're going to need a short game too because you're not going to hit every. You're not going to hit every green. Sometimes you're going to miss the green, and you got to have those little finesse shots where you uh, you get it up and down, and you need a little arsenal, and you need to stretch that out to like 100 yards on end. So we've got you covered. Great lineup here this week, starting with a former number one world player uh, in the world and someone who, uh, trust me, has a terrific short game. All you got to do is look at his track record and all the shots that he's hit over the last 15 to 20 years. Five times he's won on the PGA Tour. Seven times he's won on the European Tour. And he's a great follow, folks, at Luke Donald. He posts some great short game stuff, and he joins me now, Luke Donald. Luke, thank you so much for your time today. Hey, Travis. Thanks uh, Thanks for having me on, and uh, appreciate all the kind words. Um, yeah, the short game has helped me a lot over the years, so uh, definitely a very handy thing to uh, be, be good at. Uh, can, can keep that momentum going, can keep, uh, keep that score going. That's right. I mean, you got to get it up and down to, to keep – the score going and, and so many times you know you you, you kind of go along you hit good drives you hit good approach game shots and all right you hit a lot of fairways hitting a lot of greens but even on your best days tour players like yourself luke you guys are going to miss greens i mean you're miss hitting shots you've got to have a short game and for you guys and the difficulty of the greens you got to have a lot of different shots and we're going to get into that but i want to start with a video that you posted that i really like and it, it talked about approach wedge play, right? So let's let's stretch it out here: eighty yards, ninety yards, a hundred yards for you. It'll probably go all the way up to like one forty. Uh, but approach wedge play. If there's one thing that stands out to me, Luke, when I watch players of your caliber hit these shots, it's how low you guys launch these shots. These balls come out lower trajectory, and you talked about that. Share with us some things that that you've worked on over the years, hitting that little lower approach wedge shot well you know it it is important it's uh from 125 yards and in i'm spending three quarters of my time on my practice but when it comes to those low flighty wedges i think if you look at all the best players um the the best wedge players over the years you know a lot of them the trajectory comes out pretty low has a decent amount of spin um and they can really control the distance the tra- and the trajectory I- extremely well. And um, that in turn, uh, you know, gives you a great opportunity to get up and down. So, yeah, I think some of the keys for me when it comes to those shots are feeling a little bit wider coming down. So, um, you know, feeling that club head is a little bit wider, lo- less narrow, less steep. You know, that's going to create a little bit of a shallower angle of attack. Uh, but I also want a lot of speed and body rotation. Now, even if it's a, a little bit of a shorter shot, um, you know, not quite a full shot, I still really want that kind of, um, you know, consistent rotation with, where your, your club is matching the body. And, um, you know, there's no real slow, lazy swing where and getting steep on it where the ball pops up. So, again, I'm not really changing ball position too much, um, but I am making sure that the club is coming in a little bit shallower uh, with lots of speed and body rotation. And I think that uh, is always kind of the things that I think about when I'm trying to hit those flighted wedges. So if you're in between a 54 and a 50, are you more times than not? And those are just two lofts. I mean, you know, four or five degrees splits there, but let's just say 54 and 50. If you're in between those two, are you going to take a 50 more times than not and maybe three quarter it and trap it and keep it down? Or are you going to try to go full, you know, full gas with a 54? Well, if I can get the 54 there and full gas, I will. I mean, it really depends on on the shot you're kind of mm-hmm. hitting uh, with the pin position, the, how firm the greens are, where the wind direction is. There's so many things that kind of go into our thinking as pros. You know, we're really um, putting all that information and, and calculating that before we hit the shot. So, you know, um, maybe a pin that's more at the back of the green, I might hit the 50 degree wedge where mm-hmm. I want the ball to skip towards the back. You know, I don't want it you know, flying all the way to the hole. 
um, a, a front pin, I might take it on um, mm -hmm. and try and hit that 54 as hard as I can, create a little bit more spin that way um, and hopefully get it to pitch just a little bit past the hole and, and back up. But it, again, it depends a lot, lot on, on the kind of shots you're trying to hit. On that lower shot on your video, it looked three quarter in nature and it looked like you almost, you know, kind of cut it off a little bit, you know, three quarter nature finish. It certainly, you know, wasn't up in the air. Would, are you trying to, is that ball straight for you or is it, is it dying one way or the other? Do you, is it kind of a draw bias shot? Would you say? Um, I've never really tried to hit too many shots uh, with draw bias in my short game. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, creates a little bit too much of an in to out path. Um, I've never really been that way. I've been trying to be a bit more neutral. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I, I can hit a draw and I can hit a fade, um, you know, just literally by changing my stance, I think is the easiest way. Just you create your alignment. You aim a little bit to the right, the club path's gonna get a little bit more to the right and, and you're gonna create a, a little bit more of a draw and, and same with the fade. But um, uh, I can't remember, what was your original question? You were saying something about... Um, well, the uh, the draw versus, yeah, so that was the question, the draw versus the fade. It's, it's interesting, yeah. like when you're working with amateurs, They'll 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 most always take the higher lofted club and they'll try to swing it full and and of course naturally they're hitting the ball very high they don't have the shaft lean so this yeah. shot when you teach them that little shaft lean and maybe a little from the inside gets them a bit shallower um, as you were talking yeah. about certainly I think if you want to create a little bit more shallow um, hitting a little bit more of a draw is, is certainly the easier way you know and, mm -hmm. and closing your stance off is a natural way to create a little bit more shallowness. Yeah, uh, in your swing, you know, um, I tend to get a little bit steeper with my swing, and I naturally I get a bit closed in my stance just to to offset that sometimes. So mm. um, that that's pretty natural for me, um, and that's, that's kind of how my body works. But um, yeah, you were saying how it looked like I was almost like a three quarter yeah. spin off finish, and I think that that comes from the speed you're trying to create. So you're trying to create that speed at the ball. And the reaction is that it stops a little bit quicker. It's not that long kind of lazy swing that, that has that longer finish. So um, I think that was just a natural byproduct. It's not really something I'm thinking about. Um, okay. But the the, the, the the shot I posted on my on my page, I think was a hundred yard shot. Um, so it was a little bit off a sandwich of 54 degree for me. I, I usually hit that max about 115. So I'm shortening the backswing a little bit trying to create a little bit more speed at the ball and have that full rotation. And I think just that reaction makes, makes the, the, the shot kind of look like that three quarter sawn off shot. All right. Knowing that you have enough club in your hand, like you can then scale it down three quarters. Uh, I love watching that shot from you guys. Speaking of close stance, you also have one about the bunker shot, the green side bunker shot. And you're hitting greenside bunker shots with your feet. Now, for a right-handed player, close would be to the right, okay? And then open would be to the left. Your feet were very much to the right, and you're hitting these greenside bunker shots beautiful up in the air. That is that the way that you're hitting your greenside bunker shots now, for the most part? Um, yeah, I'd say I'm generally pretty square. I think being a little bit open is fine. I just feel like most amateurs get way too open and mm -hmm. it encourages them to drop that club too far from the inside, which in bunker play, I think is kind of a no-no. Um, the club kind of gets um, too much behind you. It's going to uh, bottom out a little bit too far back in the, stand, in, in the sand. You're going to hit a lot of fat shots or maybe try and lift the ball up and, and, and skull it, uh, bounce it into the ball. So, you know, I, I always feel like um, with bunker play, yeah, obviously using the bounce is, yes. is the key. I mean, I mean, if you understand how the bounce works, that's, that's half the problem, maybe even more than, more than half the problem. But um, yeah, getting a little bit square, a little bit sharp for me uh, um, promotes that a little bit. No, it's not really over the top, but it's definitely, I'm feeling like the club head is out and then it comes back out mm -hmm. again and it's it's going down and, and to the left. Um, obviously, I'm re-hinging the club past impact. Uh, I'm exposing that bounce, exposing as much loft as I can on the ball, and that allows me to hit the ball with some speed. And again, obviously, speed is is spin. And you're and you're really rotating the shaft too. It seems like you know maybe like the 
like the shaft's not vertical, right? The shaft is, is rotating kind of horizontal. And I think, I love what you said, it, you know, it kind of works around you. And then as you come down, then the club head kind of kicks back out, you know, right. and then it exits back around to the left. So rotating the shaft a little bit in the face with that close stance, it makes a lot of sense. Let me ask you this. It, would you say on tour, generally speaking, I know everybody's different, but just like as a whole on average, that that closed stance has become a little bit more accepted versus as open? Because I know for years, it just seemed like that's the only way to hit a bunker shot, right? Was open the face, open your stance, off you go. And now I see, I do, I do see guys more square, it feels like, or slightly closed. Do you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, I, I think so. I, yeah. I think... Um... Again, I think it's slightly open is fine. It's just uh, yeah, the, yeah. the trouble I get with some people, especially amateurs that struggle out the bunker and they're way open. I, I just think it, uh, again, promotes people to try and like get the ball back going towards the target, which is way to their right now. So it gets them to dropping inside too much and, and, and they bottom out the club too far behind the ball. So mm -hmm. having that feeling of, yeah, um, you know, opening, opening the club face a lot on the outside on the way out and really throwing it, throwing it back towards the ball, um, you know, and, and down and a little bit more to the left is yeah. better, you know, getting that club face and, and club path way to the right in bunker play, I don't think works very well. <laughs> well, and, and you talked about this folding of the left double, which we'll get to in a second, which I just, I absolutely love. And that's a game changer for a lot of people, you know, in using the bounce, which we'll get to. Um, but in the bunker, it seems like here, this, here's a common question that, that I would see a lot. You get set up and then they know instinctively that they have to, they, they have to turn coming through. Like they know they have to, you have to turn your body coming through and propel the sand and all that. How much turn do you feel going back? Is it kind of a, in, is it more of an independent move, say with the arms and hands, or is there some turn with it relative to the full swing, which we know is, a big wind up and then right. off we go. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think in short short pitches and in bunker play, it's a little bit more of an arm swing going back. Okay. Um, obviously, in, in bunker play, you've got quite a wide stance. You know, that's mm. gonna gonna really limit that turn a little bit. The wider you stance, the, you have that stance, the less turn you're gonna have. So, um, yeah, I would say, you know. Again, it's a little bit more of an arm swing. You know, I'm really trying to create some loft on the way back, especially in bunker play. I've done that drill where you, you scoop up a little bit of sand on the face and you're trying to throw it over your over your right shoulder, you know. And if you get yeah. the club too shut or too too upright, that, that sand's just going to fall off before you even get the club to the top. So that's another good little very simple drill just to get that feel. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you, if you kind of stabilize that turn, it, you know, that going back, then that can rotate a little bit more that face, you know, rotating, going back. Do you, it seems like a lot of players, of course the face is open. We know that. Do you feel anything different? Like with your wrists at all in a bunker shot versus say a full swing seven iron, or is it just pretty much the same? Um, no, the, it's definitely more opening, um, okay. and, and more rehinging possible. Um, you know, that's, that's obviously quite a bit different. Um, I think amateurs too get a little bit, um, in trouble by, you know, I open the club face, then take my grip, you know, I'm not, I'm not taking my regular grip and then opening it that's... because that's just going to create too much of that natural tendency mm. to shut the, shut the face impact, which is great in, uh, in full swing, but you're trying to create, uh, again, using that bounce as much as possible and, and rehinge it on the way through. So, you know, I'm opening the club face, taking my, my grip, which is a little bit weaker than normal. Uh, I've had my right hand way more on top than I would in a, in a full okay. swing. So I'm, I'm just maximizing everything I can do to really keep that club face nice and open and expose that bounce. So there's two good nuggets right there. And that it's like one is, um, that right hand on top is, is, has got a lot of value weaker, right? On top versus under. Yeah. Um, and then, well, before you put the grip on, have the face open, right? So sure. don't You're grip it, then it, open yeah. it. Right. Like th those are that, that's, that's great stuff there. Let's, let's move along here to spine angle as we kind of keep working around the green here. We've, 
talked about approach wedge. There's a little green side bunker. And now we kind of step out of the bunker, getting these little medium pitch shots, whether it's off a tight lie or decent, you know, lie out of the rough. Of course, a green side bunker shot can be hit off of in the hay too, deep lie. You can hit a kind of a bunker shot type of shot out of long grass and kind of flop it up there. Let's save that shot. Let's talk more medium trajectory and more about spine angle. Is there anything, Luke, that as you get in close with your spine that you start doing differently? It seems like in a full swing, you know, we might be tilted behind it a little bit like with a driver, but then we start getting in close and the spine starts to get more stacked up. And in your videos, you talk a lot about your sternum and where it is. Talk, Talk about that. Yeah, I, I've, you know, see, um, having worked with Pat Goss for 20 years or so, yes. um, you know, he, he really was very instrumental in a lot of my understanding of the short game. I think he, he helped me a lot. Um, but yeah, b- between us, we were very, always very cognizant of, you know, trying to match that shaft to my, my, my sternum mm. and, and making sure that that, that angle pretty much throughout the swing kind of matched the whole way. So even when I, in my finished position, you know, everything is turned and, and matching the shaft angle. There's no um, shaft lean. There's no shaft leaning backwards. Everything is just kind of rotating together, keep keeping everything as neutral as possible. So, yeah, I think a, a medium sized pitch, you know, um, I think you're starting to have the weight a little bit more, 55 60 towards that left hand side so you're going to have a little bit more lean not so much you know in a driver where you're you're lean behind it and you're trying to launch it up you know here you're trying to still hit down on the ball you know short yeah. game is still important like i think so many amateurs get that wrong that that standard pitch is one of the hardest shots for amateurs and um you know we got so much loft on the club 54 60 degree wedges you know Phil Mickelson's probably using 64 degree now. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much loft. You 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 just but you have to hit down on the ball. And I think right. most amateurs are trying to lift that ball up in the air, uh, gets their spine angle tilted too far to the right. Yeah. And that obviously, where that spine angle is a a dre- an impact is going to really place where the club hits the ground. Right. So, Right. If you lean too far to the back, you're gonna you're gonna bottom out the club and and not not get that good strike. You know, it's funny, like I could watch, you could hit Luke probably a hundred balls from the same spot and hit that little medium pitch club head comes in it hits down, but then it gets out of the ground quick. Like it doesn't, it doesn't dig. And you could probably sit there and hit a hundred balls and you would never know that you were there because you didn't even really bruise the grass that much, right? Like you're just, that club just comes in and just, and I remember I did a show with, with Mark Kalkovecchia for golf channel back in like 2018 and he sat there and we did a segment and he hit probably 20 shots. And I remember we were moving the cameras. And I looked back and I was like, you can't even tell we were there. Like it was, it was amazing. It just, you know, just the club came in, caught the ball and then got out. You know, it didn't dig, right? It didn't go in, catch the ball and then dig. What you know, I mean, you can hit that shot, like, but it has to be more precise, right? And that's where the bounce comes in. And where I'm going with this, that new, it, it seems like to me, Luke, you hit that. You hit a lot of shots where that shaft's pretty neutral. Maybe just a just a, f- a fraction of forward shaft lean. Would that would that be fair? Or yeah, I'm trying to again be pretty neutral. Um, okay, uh, might might get a, a, a touch forward, but again, yeah, as you said, the 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 club, the sandwich and the lob wedge, they have plenty of bounce on them, so they're designed to be still hit down on the ball, but it will help just brush the ground. You know, obviously. Most amateurs, again, love to get the ball position really far back. They open their stance. They lean the shaft a lot, uh, exposes what you call that dig edge, that front edge, and, and they, they create kind of thick divots. And, you know, you have to yeah. be very precise with the strike that way. I think that can create some solid contact, but yeah. uh, it's very hard to get the ball up in the air and, and have any kind of spin. So, yeah. you know, learning to... Um, you know, set up with the club face pretty neutral and, um, uh, you know, not too much shaft lean and, and returning that club face and the shaft in, in the same spot you, uh, you you set it up to, I think is is, is one of the keys in, in short game and pitching. Rapsodo Mobile Launch Monitor. Improve your golf swing today. Pro level launch data in the palm of your hand. It is 
very accurate within 2% of a $20,000 unit. The Rapsodo MLM app automatically tracks stats and stores video with Shot Tracer, helpful for club gapping and understanding true distances for each club. Rapsodo MLM provides immediate feedback, data, and creates a better practice environment, not mindlessly hitting balls. Extremely portable. Case is about the size of a rangefinder. And you know what? You can use it both indoors and outdoors. I love this launch monitor. It's the Rapsodo Mobile Launch Monitor. Check it out at rapsodo.com. R A P S O D O.com. Rapsodo.com. Was that was that something you had to learn coming from Europe? Where maybe the it was the ground like was the ground um you know, more on the firm side over there where you had to use the leaning edge or, you know, cause I, I see, I see a lot. It's interesting. Cause I'm here in Florida yeah. at, in Ponte Vedra. A lot of guys come from the North and they'll have more shaft lean and and then they'll see their spine to the it, right to kind of manage that. It, I'd say in Florida where I, where I live now, it's, it's a little bit harder to get away with shaft lean just because of the grain. The grain, uh, yeah. Bears club where I play, it's very grainy. So mm-hmm. shaft lean just doesn't work with that. Um, so for me, if, you know, if I get something very into the grain or something quite firm, I end up just um, elevating the club face. So getting a little bit more upright, uh, feeling a little okay. bit taller, a little bit more over it. Um, so I'm exposing the toe of the club a little bit more, which has mm. a bit more bounce. And um, that seems to brush through the grass a little bit easier. I think, you know, shuffling or low hands exposing that heel is only going to create uh, too much dig. Talk about this lead elbow now, because you we've got the shaft neutral. We've got the spine, you know, pretty neutral as well. And we're taking it back and then we're bringing it down. And then here comes this exit. You talked about this elbow, which I loved in these little pitch shots, not pulling away behind you, not retracting behind you, but rather folding, right? So the club head could pass. Take us through that left elbow feel, if you will, and, and the benefit of that. Yeah, and I think it's a little bit similar with the right too. So even on the right, I want it to fold on the way back. That creates a nice uh, way to create loft in the face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then it then it closed it closes back down towards the ball, and then it obviously creates. Then you want the rotation of your body uh, to match the spine uh, and the shaft, and so just having that little softer elbow for me allows me to kind of create a little bit of folding, mm-hmm. and um, that allows me to match that that club head um, and that shaft to my spine angle. You know, not not everybody does that. You, you'll see. Uh, I'm just thinking of, you know, even Jordan Speed has a little bit more of that elbow mm-hmm. forward, right? And he yeah. does that in his full swing as well. You know, some people drag a little bit, but I think most amateurs who drag, I think, um, you know, again, it's just not going to lead to as much consistent strikes. A lot of toe hits. Like you get that because yeah. you get that wipe and that, and they, then you hit it on the toe and that retracts versus toe, toe, folding. Toe hits usually less spin too. You know, if you yeah. really want to spin it, you want to get a little bit closer to the heel, uh, which is yeah. a dangerous shot. But uh, that, that's where the most spin is. I'm, I'm not sure anybody hits pitch shots with more shaft lean than Jordan in today's game. He he it, he's got the ball. He's got the shaft pressed forward. That's a tough technique for amateurs. You got to be pretty skilled to to do that. You guys yeah. can certainly handle that, but. Great hands. He obviously is great yeah. at short game, but it, it has made him come undone occasionally. I mean, I'm just thinking back to Augusta, that twelfth hole, but yeah, where it got a little tight. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, hard, yeah. hard to fault his short game, right. especially his putting. You know, it's funny that these elbows, right? Like, like these elbows are folding. I, I think of like Jason Day, and even you, Luke. Like, it feels like, seems like sometimes you'll hit a shot. It almost looks like your wrists are very passive. And you turn your torso, your right elbow fold, and then you turn your torso and your left elbow fold. And it almost like your hands just, it's like a very subtle passive hinge. It's not yeah. real pronounced and it no. looks wide, you know, like it almost looks like it's coming in and the, the bottom is very U shape versus say V shape. Is that, do you, do you hit shots where it feels kind of passive that way with the hands and wide? Is that something that is felt yeah. or is it just like a technique that's something that you just do naturally 
No, I think, you know, when I feel like I'm pitching my best is certainly, you know, I feel like that body rotation is, is pretty significant. So, the, the, you know, at the end of my shot, my, my, all my torso and body is, is facing the target. So mm -hmm. there's quite a lot of body rotation. I feel like it's kind of the weight of the club head, though, that's pulling me forward. But mm. it, it's, it's not, it's really that the force and the speed of the, of the, the head that's pulling me around. It's not, not I'm pulling it and it's dragging behind me, the club. It's right. Kind of the, the, I'm feeling the weight of the club head pulling me forward uh, and, and uh, rotating me. Like there's more of a but again, it's not there's not a lot of hands in there. Yeah, I just think that's such a cool shot, especially in Florida. I mean, that one's it just feels that that's a that's a shot that I see a lot with your skill, and I'm teaching people just kind of more passive and 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 almost just use your elbows, <laughs> you know, fold your right elbow, fold your left elbow, and yeah. it's just amazing how that bottom gets a little bit cleaner. And I always tell yeah. people like we're trying to create that environment where you hit the ball first and then it gets out of the ground. It doesn't dig. Because for the amateur, that dig, man, it's like it's like you know that it's fingernails on the chalkboard. Because now if they're like, oh no. If you're digging, you have to be really, really precise. You know, if you if you have a little bit better technique and you have to use the bounce a little bit better, it just gives you more margin forever. And I think that's what we all need in this game. It's, it's hard enough to to be super precise every time with that with that strike. So using clubhouse design gives gives you a little bit more a little bit more room for error. All right, so we're in a tight lie. Okay, we're around the green. It's very tight. And let's go. We're going to bent grass now. Okay. And it's, man, there's just, there's nothing there. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, I got to get this. You know, it's like a worse nightmare for a lot of players. So I'm going to say, and it's, let's call it, let's say it's 15 yards, medium pitch, got to carry it into the green, you know, a little bit, a little spin and settle down. I'm not short side, I got a little room. So, what am I going to do to the face, shaft, body? What kind of – just give us a quick cliff notes, tight lie, green side, got to get this up and down. What's Luke doing? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but, you know, the tighter the lie, the more I actually um, raise the handle and okay. um, expose the toe of the club a little bit. So I'm still, for me, ball position is always a little bit more forward of center, a little bit more lean. Um, to the left, um, club face is slightly open, um, and I'm just feeling like that toe is really brushing along the ground. And I feel like when when the when the the club when the the ground is firm like that, and the green the, and the grass is pretty tight, again that gives me a little bit more room for error. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to come out a little bit lower, um, and maybe not be that high checky spinny one, but it will release a little bit more. It's a little bit in between like a pitch and a chip, but uh, I think it's going to give you the best opportunity to hit, hit the, the strike uh, as well. That, and certainly in my experience. One of the things that's interesting to me, even at your guys' level is that like that getting the club head to pass the left wrist is kind of the stock shot for so many of you. You can all hit it. But there's a lot of guys still that would they they you can tell they're more comfortable with the handle forward and you know turning and a little more leading edge and but you really you really have to have both like you look at the full swing we know we come in and the left wrist is flat you know and the shafts forward and you're turning and then it you know the club head passes like up there but in a short yeah, game you want you want it to pass power. down here like you want it to pass sooner so it's like a different left wrist and you look at like Victor Hovlin who. I mean, really, in essence, is kind of learning how to do that right now. Get the club head to pass because he's such a, you know he's right. such a shaft lean thumper, which is great for full swing. Um, but yeah, and again, I think you can create very solid contacts with short game that way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and if you're a firmer, tight lie, I think it's actually going to be okay. But if you have to loft it a little bit um, and create <laughs> a little bit more spin. Or you have to go over a bunker, and you know how tight the pins are on board. You know, oh, yeah. and Victor's just figuring this out, but you know he needs to create a little couple different options, and mm -hmm. um, you know, letting that club kind of pass by the hands um, is going to going to give him a little bit more height, a little bit more softness, and a little bit more spin. You got to have that shot, right? I mean, it's just right. There, there's no way around it. Not on tour. I mean, you have to have that shot where it passes and faces open, and you can. 
throw it up medium trajectory because you guys are going more medium and high. There's very seldom can you guys really just hit a true vanilla like bump and run chip, right? I mean, just unless you're just you short of the green or something. Often. Yeah. Um, <laughs> something I used to practice a decent amount, but I don't practice it that much because you know, I don't know. I feel like we're so good with the, the lob wedge and the 54s and sandwich that, you know, um, yeah, it's not a shot. I actually had one a few weeks back and <laughs> I, I I picked up my wedge or nine nine I think it was and I was like maybe I shouldn't hit this because I haven't, it's the right shot to hit. I had, <laughs> you you know, hit it. <laughs> eighty feet of green and I was about 20, uh, 10 yards off the green, but yeah, and I, I hit a miserable shot because I just haven't <laughs> practiced it that much. Right. And, you know, you, you lose your you lose your your touch a little bit when you don't do that. But yeah, I, I just don't buy like the whole adage of get the get the ball on the green and running. Like I think for a higher handicap, certainly there's some value to that, but. Yeah. I think as you develop yeah, your short your game, pasta. yeah, as you develop your short game, you guys aren't, I mean, it's, it's really about controlling trajectory and spin and you guys are going to, you know, throw it up a little bit higher, medium trajectory and, and then use the spin for control, um, versus keeping it down on the green and then letting it run. And then all of a sudden you lose control because the slope's taking it and all that. So that's for another time. All right, let's finish up with this. I got to ask about your putting because. I've always loved your putting stroke and it's, it really, and I know Pat very well over the years and he was your longtime coach and, or still is your coach from Northwestern days, right? Where you, yeah, we're not working together now, but yeah, we, oh, okay. work, we work, work together for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. For a long time. And, and he's up there and he's, and he's very knowledgeable um, with the short game, but your putter, the, I've used you as an example so many times. The first thing that I love is just your grip, number one, and then your forearm alignments number two look it's amazing like you can you can show a lot of people a lot of things in golf and amateur but when you show them how to get their forms to match the putter shaft at address and not get one higher than the other it's like it has such an impact for so many because right. then they their elbows are kind of, almost kind of tucked in and their wrists are almost a little bit unhinged and then they're like oh wow i can just kind of i can just make like a little turn and the putter head just kind of moves on this brilliant little subtle arc is that something that that you are conscious of of your your form alignments kind of risk conditions and getting things to match up or is that just second nature now well it's it's something i actually have to work on all the time is my, is my setup and i think setup really is probably the most important thing when it comes to putting you know it's it's um it's such a small stroke that you've got to get that stuff right right mm -hmm. in full swing you have a little bit more time and to make um, adjustments here and there while you're while you're swinging, but putting is such a small stroke that if you can return the club face um, at the same loft and lie as where you had it started, and assuming you're 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 lining 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 up pretty well, then you have a great chance to to make putts. So yeah, there's certain fundamentals that in, in my setup that I'm I'm always kind of looking at. Um, obviously, where my eyes are. Um, where my hands hang beneath my shoulders. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm, you know, I, I think about my grip quite a, yeah. quite a bit. Um, I'm not really specifically trying to, you know, match that shaft and my forearms together, but I think going through what I've just said, um, it is, yeah. automatically does it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a, a few things that I'm, I'm constantly uh, looking at in my setup and, that, is it that's really important is it more of like a turn with you in the motion or is it a up down is it side to side? like what would you how would you describe it like it's interesting like i'm not a huge fan of rocking because it kind of gets the head going yeah back. i don't really like the rocking it's just i feel like that triangle is just kind of like one piece like moving yeah. i feel a little bit on the top of my um okay kind of shoulder blades um but it's it's more of just yeah just a yeah. kind of rocking motion i i i tend to get a little bit further away from the ball and have more tilt than than a lot of players i think Forward. i try to get my arms really hanging directly underneath my shoulders mm -hmm. and that tilt allows me to have a little bit more space between my hands and my uh, thighs i feel like a lot of amateurs in, in general would be the other way. They get a little bit too close to the ball. They have a yes. knee flex. Uh, they get a little bit like crunched in there. 
and then they don't really have room just to kind of let the the arms kind of flow and 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 rock and swing or whatever you want to call it um and that that uh, setup gives me a little bit more of a freedom to just let the arms kind of uh, do their thing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask you your best putting drill, but before you say it, I, I've stole I've stole a couple things from you. But uh, the most recent one is your downhill drill you did at Pebble. <laughs> it was, I mean, I like it was like wow, that's so simple, but it's so good. And I never even thought about doing that. Was you know you were putting at Pebble? This is at Luke Donald on Instagram and. Uh, it was, I think it was left or right, probably like 12 feet. And you put the T in the, in the, bo- like the bottom portion, the front bottom. So the ball had to enter from really the top side, say nine o'clock. If you yeah. know, right. And I mean, that was just like, yeah, like, duh, like that's so well, simple, but yet so effective visually. Like I have to bring it in here. So I gotta be, I gotta borrow more. I gotta be softer. All those things. Yeah. We, we know from studying amateurs that they under read putts by two yeah. to three times that the break, you know, if a prop breaks a foot, they might see, you know, a ball, two, mm-hmm. two balls left or right. So really like setting up uh, on a slopey-ish putt with a decent amount of break, you know, just putting a tee kind of on the underside, like, and then thinking about the putt as a clock, you know, if it's a mm-hmm. left or right putt, you're really trying to enter the, the hole at seven eight o'clock you know you mm-hmm. want it dying on that high side you know we always talk about the pros miss on the high side and amateurs usually on the low side so it's just really trying to create that visual um yeah that visual tool really to mm-hmm. see that break as much as possible because using your eyes in putting is, is extremely important you know and yeah seeing that line seeing that break and seeing how much putts break because you know, again we we know that uh, amateurs tend to not read enough break and uh and that's a good good very simple drill everyone has a tea in their bag um, <laughs> easy to set up and uh very very cheap <laughs> yeah. um what's your what what's what's one of your favorite drills i mean that's a, that's a good one but is there another one that on putting that's kind of a go-to i see you doing the chalk line or the string a decent amount yeah, I do the string. That's that's a good one. Uh, I think a, a good lagging drill is really important. You know, just um, I set up a box, three foot box behind the hole. Uh, I start at 12 feet and I have three balls and I'm really just trying to dial in my speed. So the first ball has to get just in the box for dying speed. The next ball has to get past that ball, but okay. stay in the box. Next ball has to get still in the box, but with yeah. more speed, you know, so you're trying to do that. Then I'll go back six feet and I'll maybe do the opposite. I'm doing the hard speed first, the medium speed, the soft speed, you know, I'm really trying to dial that in. But my all time favorite drill is, is a four to eight foot drill, um, where I get five balls randomly around the hole, four, five, six, seven, eight randomly, uh, at four different holes. So I'm 20 putts in, in total. We all know how holding those putts is huge for momentum, you know, trying mm-hmm. to get those up and downs, you know, maybe sneaking the odd birdie here and there. Um, but tour average for four to eight feet is uh, about 68%. So if you get in 14, you're just above tour average. I obviously try and set my goals a little bit higher than tour average. I want to be the best. So 15, 16 would be really good if you can do that drill in 16 out of 20 putts. But I love that drill because wow. one, every putt is different. Mm. It's not the same putt. And two, um, I like to add some pressure. Like if I don't mm-hmm. get to 15, I have to do it again. So those last few putts, uh, you know, and <laughs> yeah. you've got to make the last three, say, to, to do yeah. 15, that, that starts to simulate what it feels like in, in a tournament. So <laughs> you know, those, are, those, are, those are great, great drills. I love yeah. anything with variability, anything that puts a little bit of pressure on you. All right, final question. I get this question a lot. How often split split up your split up the practice for us here? Um, let's say you're going to practice three hours today. All right, and just in general, how much time are you going to practice of those three hours on your putting and your short game? Uh, just in general. Half. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think when I was, I, I think I have fallen like a little bit out of that in the last few years. I, I've been tinkering with some stuff in the swing and maybe spending too much time on the range and, mm-hmm. and kind of got a little bit away from that. But, you know, in general, I break up my practice 
into putting, short game, wedge play, which would be 130 yards and in, mm-hmm. and range. And I'm trying to put an equal amount of time uh, on, on all of those. So four hours, I'm putting an hour on each. Love it. Which is which is pretty much three out of the four hours, I'm 125 yards and in. Yeah, right. That's, that's what, a that, lot. <laughs> that's exactly, that's, well, that's kind of what I was thinking you were going to go you know like that is a lot that's a that's a that's a great deal amount they're like well how do they have such good short games well i mean there's let's let's start there (laughs) like what luke just said you know i mean that's what it takes to have that repetition and feel right now technique we know is huge but um man when you sit there and you just grind it like good technique creates feel too yeah you know i think you're not just born with feel. You you have to work on it. So uh, the more you work on it, more you understand it. The more you control the trajectory, the spin, etc. But that comes from from good technique, and that then you can create uh, a lot of feel. Luke Donald, I can't thank you enough. Um, I could ask you, I don't know, probably twenty five more questions, but I won't. <laughs> uh, I'll just uh, I'll just direct the audience to your Instagram at Luke Donald. You post some great stuff. I know you had a great finish a couple weeks ago, eleventh. Uh, and um, build on that momentum yeah, here uh, with our, our 13th. I know it was a good finish with Congre. New new event coming up at South Carolina, and I'm sure uh, lots of golf right now as, as the game of golf is flowing, and um, it's just great to see you guys back out there playing, and, and thanks for uh, joining us here on the Stripe Show. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me, Travis. I just want to interrupt this interview real quick and give a shout-out to my friends over at Encore Golf. Encore provides some of the most cutting-edge technology in a golf ball that I have ever seen. Their team in Buffalo, New York, is changing the script of golf technology through their perimeter-weighted designs, which offer players enhanced accuracy and control for every shot on the course. With their award-winning Elixir and Avant 55 golf balls, they are transforming the game for players of all skill levels. Visit EncoreGolf.com backslash Travis Fulton for more details about their products that are revolutionizing the game. Now back to the Stripe Show.